Hello and welcome to this first lesson where we begin our journey to mastering Excel formulas. And in this first lesson, we're going to begin by looking at the basic framework of a formula and what it contains. And we're going to do some basic calculations uh, just using Excel like a calculator, really. And then in the later lessons of this class, we will begin to investigate functions and some slightly more powerful stuff as we progress uh, to about an intermediate level of formulas. So on my spreadsheet at the moment, I have four numbers, four values, which you know represent maybe some kind of price or quantity or whatever you want them to really for this beginning example, where we just play around with formulas to start with. So without further ado, let's start putting a formula together. Let's get quick and to the point. And formulas always start with equals. So you would begin by clicking in the cell where you want the result to appear. And let's imagine I want the result of a formula in cell D3. Equals begins all formulas. There's no exception to that rule as you type. Now after that, you would typically select a cell that contains the value or or the string, which is a piece of text in the geeky talk, um, that you want. In this example, I'm imagining that I want A2. And maybe I'm looking at adding two numbers together. So after selecting A2, I would put in my plus sign. So the next thing you would do is put in the arithmetic operator, shall we say. At this point, I'm looking to add, so the plus sign goes in. And then I would click on a different cell. Now I can click any cell I want. And indeed, worth mentioning, you can also type values in. It may be a scenario where it benefits me to type the value in rather than select a cell. Now that's nowhere near as commonplace. Most of your formulas will refer to cells because that gives it that dynamic nature. And if A2 changed, my formula would automatically change. Number four will not. But there are some examples where you don't want these values to change. Now notice as I'm selecting the cells that Excel is also changing the color of those cells. It shades them a different color to just help me check my progress. It doesn't matter how good you can get at formulas. Some of these little things that Excel does as you write them, we really appreciate them. You know, even the best Excel person can sometimes spot an issue before it happens because of the, the little clues Excel give you. And this color coding is maybe not too impressive right now with the cells pretty much next door, <laughs> but uh, can help at times. Now, at that point, once I've constructed my formula, I can press enter to confirm that will run that formula and produce the answer of 140 because 40 plus 100 is 140. And if I click on that cell, I can not only see 140 in the cell, but up above on what's called the formula bar, I can see the underlying formula of A2 plus A3. So I know that that cell does not contain 140, it contains a formula that results in 140. Whereas if I click one of these values over here, in for example A4, I can see that actually is the number 50. That's not a formula, that's not a result, that is what it contains. Now because this cell contains the formula, that means that if cell A3 for example was to change to 200, when I press enter, that automatically calculates. I'm just going to undo that step. And that's part, well, one of the major parts of the joy of formulas, really. This automatic, instant calculations. Uh, you know, it's fast, it's accurate, etc., etc. Now, if I need to change that formula, um, the, I guess, textbook way is to click on that cell and edit using the formula bar above. What I'm going to, what I normally do, though, myself, personally, is double click on that cell to get inside it, and then I can make my alterations. So I could, for example, delete that A2 part of the formula. 
I could reference A5 instead. Notice the change of the color there. Press N to confirm. I don't have to click on the end before I press enter. I can be anywhere in there. I'd press enter and it recalculates. Now I've got 15 plus 100. And people, if they would need it, can see that in the bar. Okay, so this here is the basic structure of a formula. That they always begin with equals. Uh, they're generally referring to cells at some point, And they're generally using some kind of operator. Whether that be a type of arithmetic, like plus, multiply, divide, subtract. Or whether, whether we're working with percentages or... Um, logical operators like more than less than and and so on and so forth but the classic use will be that you're trying to add or subtract or multiply values of some nature so moving on if I did want to subtract one value from another I could begin with equals remember to click in the cell where you want the answer to appear first select the cell that contains the value of interest Put in the subtraction operator, uh, so a little takeaway sign there, the hyphen, and then select a different cell or number and press enter. Very important to get in the habit of pressing enter when you run a formula. Uh, sometimes just clicking somewhere won't work, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Better habit is to press enter. Moving on, if I wanted to multiply two values, equals, click a cell, multiply, click a cell. Notice this time that multiply is the asterisk or the star or the snowflake, whatever you want to call that thing. On a UK keyboard, it's above the number 8 key. Sometimes these symbols can move around depending on your keyboard layout. Uh, but it will be on there, that is your asterisk. And that will multiply. Notice the rest of the formula is the same structure. Nothing else has really changed. Maybe the cells I referenced have changed. But really it's just that symbol. And finally we have divide. So formula once again the same way. I'm using the arrows on my keyboard right now to move around. Divide is the forward slash. The one that we use to separate dates. And on a UK keyboard layout is below the question mark. And the rest of the formula is the same. Uh, where am I going with this? Choosing 40. Uh, let's change that and uh, choose A3 instead. And then maybe if I divide it by A4, I know I'm going to get 2 rather than an answer with many decimal points. <laughs> and here we go. There's the structure of that formula. So in this first lesson, I just wanted to get us you know, get the ground running with formulas. Uh, so if you are brand new to two writing formulas, hope you appreciate this kind of basic introduction to them. We've got our four arithmetic symbols there, ab, subtract, uh, multiply, divide, and a bit of an understanding of the framework of a formula and the, uh, the fact they all start with equals and the order and different techniques for running them. Okay, see you in the next lesson where we will look at order of calculation.